In this video, here we are showing uploading data directly from a ProLink machine, in this case, a portable data acquisition system. We also have the ability to upload data from any machine using a data upload utility. After data has been appended to a test request, there are a couple of different ways that we can actually view this data. So I'm going to go into the test request module here and look at test data files. When I do this, we'll see the different categories of file extensions that we've set up in a data whitelist, and we'll see all fi relevant files attached to this test request. We can then download those to a zip file. We can also navigate to test data analysis. And this will provide many different views where we can look at this data that has been set up. In the pane on the right side of the screen, we have our specific machine that uploaded data with the sections of data and the number of records inside of each section. Now we're actually looking at a grid data view where we're going through and adding in new variables or calculations that we would like to view min, max, average type of information off of this data here. So the first one we set up is a NVH channel. And as we do that now, we can see that the peak SPL level in DB has been created. We're going to edit that change the number of decimal points that we're displaying, add that to our column list. We're going to change this also for frequency, and then we'll go back to the data grid. We'll be able to see that change take place. From this point, we're going to open a new widget. We're going to split right on that and create a raw data graph. We go in and edit the properties of this raw data graph. And now we can go through the guided edit system and start picking some of our channels and the related speed units that we want to see those in for this specific channel here is its speed. We'll add in some additional channels here. Look at deceleration in G, and then we'll fast forward through here and set up some additional channels just to show how this works. Once the channels have been set up, we'll go back to our raw data graph view here and show off a couple of features. One is that we can turn on and off the different channels just by clicking on the legend located at the top of the screen there. You'll notice as we mouse through, we actually have live data values that are being displayed in the legend there. So now we're just showing that the, we have the option to um, create an additional raw data view as well. And as we mouse through one of those, you'll see that we actually have tracking for where we are at for a given channel in time inside of the other widget windows. Here we open up and do a um, zoom in and out using the mouse wheel, as well as a highlight an area and double click. Now on the left side of the pane here, we're going to create some NVH graphs to be able to look at NVH waterfall data for a cabin microphone and some accelerometers. So as you can see, creating a new graph is very easy, pretty intuitive with the right mouse click, split left, split down. We're able to handle those things pretty easily. And once we have these channels set up, we'll now be able to see as we um, arrow up and down through the different events that have been captured, we can see all of these charts are going to update for us. Resizing these windows is very easy to do as well. So just a simple left click of the mouse and drag the window left to right to expand it or contract it in a way that makes, makes it easy for you to look at. We also have options to view in a full screen mode as well, if you want to really be able to look at one graph in, in fine detail. 
over on the right side of the pane here, now I'm jumping into a different data section. So I've now loaded 872 events that were captured. Now I'm going to save my widget layout. So I really like the way that I have this laid out here. I'm going to go ahead and save that.